In this video, we're going to look at programming patterns. Please make sure you've watched and understood the previous videos in this series, as all the parameters we've discussed are programmable within your patterns. And so if you don't know what those are, you won't know what I'm talking about. To start, I've loaded up a mix of one-shot samples and longer samples in order to demonstrate both in action. By default, the S2400 is in pattern mode, which is the base mode of the machine. This is where patterns are made. You can use the encoder or arrow keys to navigate through patterns. You can store up to 100 patterns in a project, and these are numbered from 0 to 99. Each pattern can be up to 99 measures or bars long, so you've got more than enough to work with. I'm going to start on pattern 0. Firstly, I need to set up the tempo, so I'm going to hit the metronome button to bring up the metronome settings menu. From here, you can set when the metronome is heard, the counting, the scaling, the metronome level, and the metronome output channel. I'm going to activate it for playback using the encoder so I can hear it whilst getting my tempo right, and I'll switch it back off later. If I hit run slash stop in the transport section, I should now hear my metronome on playback, and I do. I'm going to slow things down, so I'll hit tempo in the transport section to navigate to the tempo setting. I can use the encoder or arrow keys to set the tempo manually, or type it in on the keypad and confirm with enter. I'm going with 105 BPM. You can also tap the tempo in manually using the tap slash repeat button in the transport section, and if you hold down shift whilst changing the tempo, you can make fine adjustments too. Next, I'll navigate over to swing to bring up the swing menu. From here, you can set the amount of swing the current pattern has in percent and which note values you're swinging. You can then use the set for all patterns option to copy the values over to all patterns within your project. You can also set the swing amount and note values individually for every single track within your entire project from this menu, but I'm going to leave them all as pattern as it will then follow the values I set at the top of the menu. I'm going with 16ths with 58% swing. We'll look at copy later, as we haven't got anything to copy yet, and we'll move on to the time signature button. From here, you can change the time signature of your pattern. In terms of the note value that defines one beat, this can be quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, or thirty-second notes, or crotchets, quavers, semiquavers, or demi-semiquavers in old money. The number of beats in the bar can be anything from one to ninety-nine. I'm going to go with our old friend four-four for now. Next, we can hit the Pattern Length button to set the pattern length. I'm going to change this to four measures or bars and then set the new length. Next, we'll mosey on over to the Quantize button and bring up the Quantize menu. From here, you can define the quantization for every single track individually, but as with the pattern value in the Swing menu, if tracks are set to default in the Quantize menu, they will follow the default setting at the top of the menu. Quantization goes all the way from a quarter note to a 128th note or all the way from a crotchet to a semi-hemi-demi-semi-quaver. That's one to pull out during Scrabble, and also includes triplet values marked with a T. Right at the end is an option for fine, which is as close as you can get to an unquantized value within a digital sequencer. I'm going with our old chum 1 16th for this example, but remember I've already defined a bit of 16th note swing in the swing menu. So we've set up the metronome, tempo, swing, time signature, pattern length, and quantize settings. So let's get recording. The first method of recording a pattern is to play it in on the pads. By the way, the pads can be velocity sensitive if you wish. To activate this, hit Shift and Settings, and then unfold the global settings accordion. If you activate dynamic pads, then your pads will be velocity sensitive. You can set the minimum dynamic level using the dynamic minimum value. If this is set to 1%, there will be a very wide dynamic range. If you set it to 99%, there will be close to no dynamic range at all. You can also set the minimum amount of pressure required for a sound to play using the pad threshold value. Although I'm going to switch dynamic pads back off as I prefer using level parameters for volume programming. To record, hit record, edit, and run stop. We get a one bar count in and... Great, we've got kick and snare on tracks A1 and A2. If I didn't like, say, the kick drum performance and wanted to erase it from its track, I'd hit erase in the relevant pad and then confirm with the enter button. I do like this pattern, however, so I'll keep it. Quick thing to note, you can deactivate or reactivate recording without stopping the playback if you want to punch things in and out, which is pretty handy. Next, I've got this one-shot hi-hat sample, and I'm going to activate level and multi-mode. 
I'll set up eight different level values as was shown in the previous video, and then I'll record with them. If I didn't like what I'd recorded, I could again use arrays plus the main pad for this track, being pad 3 in this case, to wipe what I've recorded on that track. And this still works with patterns recorded in multi mode. You don't have to erase every single multi. Next, I've got this clap sample, and I'll navigate to pitch and multi mode and set up some different pitches. And I'll record those in. Next, I've got a sample of eight different bass notes. I've used multi-mode sync, shown in the last video, to simultaneously set up eight slices with eight different pitches. And in normal mode, I've also set up an envelope that controls volume and filter cutoff for all the multis. Using the same method as the hi-hat and clap, I can record in the bass line. I've then used the same multi-mode sync technique to create guitar, reverse piano and synth tracks. Here's those. Next, I've got a tambourine loop, but it's the wrong tempo. Aside from chopping it up into slices, I've got two options to get it in time. One is pitch stretch and the other is time stretch. Let's look at pitch first. In the track settings menu, I'll set the pitch resolution to fine and then select pitch and use the fader to find the right speed manually. Alternatively, I can open the actions accordion within the track settings menu where I can select Pitch Stretch. Here you can select the number of beats the sample contains and its BPM, and then the BPM you wish to change it to, which will default to the tempo of the current pattern. You can also use the two time option to set the pitch stretch in seconds if you wish. The S2400 will make a guess as to the BPM of your sample, and because I've used a nicely edited loop, it has calculated the correct tempo of 121.7 BPM. I then hit transpose track and the tempo should match. As mentioned, the other option is to time stretch the sample. To do this, select Time Stretch in the Actions Accordion to load the Time Stretch menu. There are different stretch algorithms for different types of audio, and broadly speaking, you should use beats for stretching one or more measures of music, and note when stretching a single note or sound, but of course, rules are there to be broken. If we use beats, then we can input the number of beats in the sample and its tempo, as we did in the Pitch Stretch menu, and we can set the tempo we want to stretch it to in BPM, seconds or percent. Again, this defaults to the current pattern tempo, which is 105 in this instance. Granulation is a value used by the stretch algorithm and the effect varies hugely depending upon the source audio and how much it's being stretched by. This can be not very much all the way to Yeah, we chilling out here with just a funk. We got a beat going on. You can preview the time stretching using the preview option or by pressing the pad, and then choose where the stretch sample will be saved to, and which track, if any, you wish to assign it to after it's stretched. This will default to the same track that the unstretched sample was originally assigned to. Okay, we no longer need the metronome during playback, so I'll go to the metronome menu again and switch that off, and let's listen to what we've got so far. If 
I want to copy this pattern over into another slot to make a variation, I hit the copy button for the pattern copy menu. You can choose whether the source of the pattern is from memory, i.e. the current project you're in, or you can choose another project from your SD card. For now, we'll just copy a pattern within this project. The from pattern is the source pattern that you wish to copy, in this case pattern zero, and the to pattern is the pattern that you wish to copy it to. If the source is memory, the number of bars in the pattern, and if appropriate, an empty pattern indicator box are displayed next to the pattern number. After defining the number of copies, navigate to the copy option and confirm. Pattern zero is now also on pattern one. If there was already a pattern on pattern one, then I would be greeted with options to either append the source pattern onto the existing pattern or to overwrite it. But what if I want to keep a pattern but override a recorded value such as filter, level, pitch, etc.? Well, whilst recording, go to the appropriate fader and press A on the track in question to enable overwrite or B to enable filter overwrite whilst in mix, level or pitch mode only. Set the new value and on the step in question, press the pad. If you want to override multiple events, set the new value and hold the pad down as it records. If you wish to set the same new value to all events within a chosen fader mode, in this case pitch, hold A and press the pad. The new pitch value is applied to all events on this track within this pattern in one fell swoop. To modify all the filter settings in the same way, set the new cutoff and resonance values using the concentric knobs, and whilst in mix, level or pitch mode, hold B and press the pad. The new filter setting is now applied to all events. In multi mode, there is also an option to modify a value for one multi. Let's say I want to alter the pitch of multi four within track three. I'd hold its A button and press the pad. Just this multi has been overwritten, the others remain unaffected. In terms of playing back, I can use the faders in main mixer mode to change the levels of tracks, and I can use the B button on a track to activate playback override of the filter settings that were recorded if I want to do some manual filtering on the fly. Likewise, if I select level, pitch, envelope, or loop slice, and then A on a track, I can override the associated values that were recorded into the pattern if I want to change them in real time during a performance. Unlike parameter record over write, parameter playback override is only temporary and isn't recorded into the pattern. In addition to this, I can use the mute and solo buttons to bring things in and out, and I can solo or mute as many channels as I like, and then use shift plus one of the mute or solo buttons to deselect or reselect all of those at once. This works across banks also, so you don't need 25 fingers or the speed of Usain Bolt when performing. Whilst playing back, I can queue up another pattern using the encoder or arrow keys, and it will play after the currently selected pattern has finished. Patterns will loop indefinitely until you manually switch to another or stop the playback. There is, however, an entire song mode which we'll cover in a later video. So here's all that in action.